Believing that you're destined for heaven when you're not would be the most tragic self-deception. David Servant's book, The Great Gospel Deception, will help you be sure that heaven will be your eternal home. Order your copy at heavenward.tv. Okay, welcome back. We're just about ready to finish the Gospel of Matthew. This is indeed the 157th Heavenward 7 episode, and this will be the 471st Heavenward 7 episode. So that's why we've decorated a little bit here to celebrate the closing of Matthew. It has been a journey. Thank you for joining me with it. We're gonna move on after this into the book of Acts. And I've decided that rather than going into detail about anything about speaking in other tongues, which we just read about in Mark chapter 16 as being one of those signs that will follow the believers, I think we'll get into that in more detail when we get into the book of Acts because uh, we'll read a, a number of times when people did speak in tongues. And then we can make reference to this and try to sort it all out as best we can from the scripture. But let it be said once again that the church of the book of Acts was a supernatural church that was gifted with gifts of the Spirit, and uh, the church grew because the Holy Spirit worked in miraculous ways. And that is brought out uh, in the final verse of Mark chapter 16, verse number 20. They went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. And we need signs to follow the preaching of the word today, of course, just as much as they did back in those days. And I'm not claiming to have uh, the corner on the Holy Spirit or the corner on power or miracles, for sure. Uh, and uh, I'm also not open to phony miracles and pushing people over and saying, that's the Holy Spirit. None of that. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in false prophecies, people just saying things out of their heads and things saying things that are unscriptural. I'm not in favor of anything that's unscriptural. I want real bonafide, Holy Spirit-given miracles, okay? And we'll talk about that a lot when we get into the book of Acts. So now we can finish Matthew's gospel. We've only got three verses left, okay? So let's begin reading um, verse number 18 uh, of Matthew chapter 28. Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, listen closely, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Can I ask you a question? How much is all? Well, the answer is all. He has all authority. So that means, you know, you can't relate to Jesus as just friend or even as just savior. The only way we can rightly relate to him is as Lord, because he has all authority in heaven and on earth. And because he has all authority, he has the right to make commandments and to tell anybody he wants to what he expects them to do. And so we should not be surprised that the one who has all authority then goes into a commandment. Verse number 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. And how do you make disciples? First of all, you baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Secondly, you teach them to observe all that I commanded you, and that's how you make a disciple. And now you make disciples, okay? So you've got to go, you've got to baptize, you've got to teach. And what do you teach? Jesus said, teach them not doctrine, although we could say we are to teach the doctrines of Christ. That's legitimate. But let's say it how Jesus said it here, teaching them to observe, or as the King James Version says, teaching them to obey all that I commanded you. All right, so that's pretty simple. Make disciples. That's what I've been doing with you guys for the last three and a half years. Now I want you to go do to, to others what I've been doing for you. I've discipled you, now go disciple others. You've gotta get them converted. You've gotta get them to die and you know, be resurrected, baptize them, and then teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And so the people who write off uh, for example, the Sermon on the Mount, and say things like, well, all the red letters in the New Testament aren't written to Christians because those were spoken under the old covenant by Jesus to Jews. That's a lie. In fact, that's a heresy. And that doesn't fit the tenor of the New Testament whatsoever. Right? Right. Anything that Jesus commanded the disciples, they were to command their disciples to do. 
including this command right here, go and make disciples. And so Jesus' plan for the church was for the disciples to make disciples, to make disciples, and to make disciples. And unfortunately, we've got some things wrong about that. We think that um, the only people who are supposed to be making disciples are preachers and teachers, whereas Jesus wants everyone to make disciples. We, we think that disciples are made by giving sermons. Well, you think after 2,000 years of sermons, somebody would have woken up by now and realized that just giving sermons does not make disciples, right? You know, and, and in fact, just giving sermons uh, doesn't, might not do anything that Jesus wants, wants because his goal is he wants people who obey him, that's the goal of Jesus. And everywhere around the world where I've traveled and taught pastors and Christian leaders, I've reminded them of this. The goal of the minister, of the pastor, of the evangelist is not just to get big crowds who gather together for meetings. The goal is to produce obedient disciples, people who do the will of God. And those are committed people, you know. One time there were huge crowds that were following Jesus and he addressed them all by saying words like this, unless you hate your mother and father, you know, and brother and sister, you cannot be my disciple. And so what he's saying there is that disciples love Jesus supremely and if it costs them their relationships with the people that they would naturally love the most, they choose Jesus anyways. Okay, so Jesus does not want large crowds of uncommitted people who are considering maybe taking a little tiny step of obedience to, you know, maybe fit him in to their perverse lives. He wants people who have repented of their sins, who have been born again, and who are striving every day to do his will. Okay, well, I could say a lot more about this, and perhaps I might even yield to the temptation to do so, but lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, Jesus says, and that is the end of Matthew. And of course, we have not given an exhaustive study of Matthew, even though you might think we have. There's so much more that could be said. Who knows, we might be coming back here at times as we work our way through Acts and the rest of the New Testament, okay? So next time, it is the book of Acts. Woohoo! Can't wait for that, a whole new day, a whole new journey. See you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.